What's up guys, Matt back again with another unboxing video and today we're going to be reviewing a classic figure, the HQDX Super Saiyan Gogeta. Before we dive into the video, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell, like the video, comment your thoughts down below for us to discuss, follow me on my socials, and consider becoming a YouTube member to enter into our monthly giveaways and Discord server so our community can help you on your Dragon Ball figure collecting journey. This figure is based on Super Saiyan Gogeta from Dragon Ball Z Fusion Reborn. The figure itself is based on his triumphant appearance in the movie. HQDX are banned presto crane figures of Dragon Ball characters on large bases. If you're interested in picking this figure up, check the video in my description below to find out the best places to shop. This figure was released sometime in January 2009. The figure stands at about 8.5 inches on his base, 8 inches off of his base, weighs 12.7 ounces in box, 8.9 ounces on his own, and the figure comes with his upper body, lower body, and base. Okay, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of knew what I was in for, more or less, when uh, I was picking this thing up. Um, it's a very old figure, obviously from 2009. Um, maybe some of you watching this video weren't even born yet. <laughs> I don't know, maybe? Uh, that was a long time ago. 15 years ago this figure came out, so... That's pretty crazy. This figure is, an, is a classic, I guess. I don't even know how many people know about HQDX, but uh, there isn't a whole lot of information of it online. Obviously, the internet was more or less still like in its infancy. It was, it was kind of in its adolescent stage. It was still growing. So there's not a whole lot of information of this online. So if you guys do know more about HQDX, please let me know. I know there's uh, quite a few figures of these out there. So if there is one that you want me to review, please let me know. I would love to review more, more of these. But let's talk about the figure itself. As a character choice, it's Gogeta, right? So Gogeta is one of the most popular characters out of the Dragon Ball franchise. If Bandai wants to make money, they will put Gogeta up in front for sale. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't think this series had other Gogetas. I can quickly check right now. So they, they did have other Gogetas, but this was the very first. So I don't think it gets any, any slaps on the wrist just yet. Um, obviously Fusion Reborn, it's my favorite, uh, Dragon Ball Z non-canon movie. Um, it is a fantastic film, animation, and everything about it is just kind of cool. Um, and it was the only appearance of Gogeta for a very long time until uh, he was brought into the canon. So um, I love Gogeta. I think it's a really cool choice. I think as a character choice, it's a no-brainer. It's a 5 out of 5. Really cool uh, choice from Bandai, even back in 2009, to include a character like this. Now, let's get into this thing. Let's really get into this thing. His likeness. It is terrible it's terrible uh he he does not look like gogeta at all in the face um what did they get right they got the color of his eyes right which is good but in the face he looks like a bootleg man like it just looks like one of those generic like action figures that that you would like see maybe like i'm from brazil right well i wasn't born there but my family is so i've been there many times and you know, in countries like Brazil, when you pass by a toy store and they're selling Dragon Ball figures, they are 99% of the time bootlegs and they would look like this guy. Um, so yeah, his likeness is not good. Um, he's just really ugly in the face overall and looks nothing like Gogeta. So likeness gets a one out of five for me. Um, I know this is in context of today the technology was different back then and everything but i'm still gonna judge it like it is because even as a kid i'm sure back then i would have looked at this and been like 
looks weird, so it doesn't matter what day and age it's from. Um, the sculpt quality is, it's doable, right? Um, he's got the big Bandai mark on his jacket, so that's kind of whack. His hair, um, you know, it's, it's sculpted okay, but it doesn't really feel like Gogeta's hair. It looks more like Vegeta's hair, and they put like a bang on it. Whereas Gogeta's hair is kind of like a healthy combination of Goku and Vegeta's hair. So that looks really weird. His uh, six pack looks deformed. <laughs> um, and his giant base, dude, this thing is so massive. And it's, it's like a hollow. So like it, it's empty on the bottom. So it can get caught on things on the underside as you can see here it's like a plate it's like a bowl almost um so it's kind of it's kind of crappy um I, I guess like the muscles for the most part look good and the bagginess of the pants and his swaying belt but overall the sculpt is like a two out of five it's not good <laughs> um and uh wh what else what else can i talk about this thing uh paint and shading paint and shading is okay um it's probably the best aspect of the figure um obviously his bezels they're a little glossy he has a glossy part on the bezels for the orange parts paint application is pretty sloppy overall he does have shading which is cool he's got shading on his skin uh, mostly you can see it on his arms and his chest uh his hair obviously has a healthy amount of shading um, but his pants are purple <laughs> His pants are just straight up purple, man. Um, so I don't remember if Gogeta had a blue or a purple belt in this form. I completely forgot. Um, but it's it's fine. Uh, I think just the purple of the pants just looks so odd on this figure. It just looks incredibly discolored. Um, so I think the paint and shading overall is going to have to get a 2 out of 5 for me. And then finally, size and scale, it's not bad. It's like a three out of five. It's its not the worst thing in the world. Um, the, the base definitely adds half an inch, which is insane. Um, he can not stand without the base because he's got the little pegs on his feet. Um, so that's, that's kind of crappy. The base takes up so much space, dude. But, you know, um, even without the base, he's a good size. Eight, eight inches is pretty good. He won't scale with like other figures. I don't even know if he'll scale with the rest of this series. I guess I'm going to find out eventually, but this thing, this thing's weird, dude. Um, he's very cheap. Uh, I, I didn't pay a whole lot for him. I, I, I it, it was such an insignificant price that I can't even remember what it is. It had to have been like 20 bucks or something at the most. So he's very cheap to pick up if you're like nostalgic or you want to get weird old figures like this. Um, I know a lot of bootlegs of this do exist, so just be careful when you're looking at that out in the wild. But just know that it may look like a bootleg um, because it, it just looks like that. But uh, yeah, dude, this thing is just terrible. Um, I, I really don't think this is worth any bit of money. I think it's just really there for the memes. So if you do want to see more of these, please let me know down in the se uh, comment section below. But today... I'm going to give him a 1.5 out of 5. But until the next video, guys, I will see you all later.